we're entering a new era of AI. Artificial intelligence is making its way into so many aspects of our lives today. A lot of people are not that the current time is an AI era. I cannot disagree with this statement because these tools have become powerful nowadays. I've decided to test if the current version of the ChatGPT can review code with the same efficiency as a human developer. Today, I will share a GitHub action that can ask ChatGPT to review a pull request. It can review any code, but I will give examples of Android code base with rookie mistakes. This video has the next sections. ChatGPT pull request review in action. Comparing the ChatGPT review with a human review. How the GitHub action works under the hood. And overall summary, prices and conclusions. Let's move on to the practice. Okay, I have Android application and it has main activity and main activity is an entry point. Also, it has main view model, it has screen and it has user profile as example. So we can see main view model, user profile, and repository is a provider of data. Now we can commit this branch to the GitHub and create the pull request. GitHub will start actions. Actions will send this code to the ChatGPT and ask it for a review. Then they will receive answer from ChatGPT and post these comments directly into pull request. Select the branch and name it as a new Android pull request. In a moment, we will see how action started and we can press details and go and see what happens in this action. Now it's completed and we can go back to pull request and see if we have comments there. And yes, the GitHub action had posted all these messages through the API. I will copy all these comments from GitHub to Android Studio. It will be easier to compare my review with a ChatGPT answers. I will speed up the video to make it less boring. So we can start our review from main activity. We have two types of comments here. Uh, first one is gray, it's mine comment. And the second one is green, is ChatGPT comment. And ChatGPT comment starts with a number. Numbers mean a line number. So the first comment is about view model. And view model was created directly with a constructor. And in Android, it shouldn't be created in this way and ChatGPT spotted it and it notified about this method of creation and it means that we should never do it and huge shout out to ChatGPT, it's a big flaw. Going next, uh, next is uh, on create method and next comment from ChatGPT about line 24. And actually line 24 is not about loading state. As we can see, loading states are placed on line 30 and it's okay to run this method from the main thread, from main activity, because uh, like all the magic should happen in the view model. And view model should use coroutines, should decide which scope, which, which context. So this comment is false positive and we can ignore it. Next we have view model prepare context method. And we intentionally pass the activity there, it's a memory leak and it should never be done in Android. And ChatGPT left a comment about it. So huge shout out to ChatGPT and the second point goes to it. At the bottom of the file we have three of my comments and zero comments from ChatGPT. The first mistake is that collection of the state is done without respect to the activity lifecycle. It brings us some issues. Additionally, it's a good practice to use themes. 
and it's better to avoid hard coding colors in the activity. I will give a minus point for the collection and a minus half of point for each of the styling. The final score for the main activity is 2-3 and we can go to main view model. The first line of the class says that something could be wrong. And we don't need to wait long, because the second line is a huge mistake in Android MVVM pattern. All view models should be extended from Android X view model. It's a big flaw and ChatGPT couldn't spot it. So a minus point to the summary. Next, ChatGPT pointed out that we should inject service from a dependency injection library. Well done, plus one. Going forward, I created a public mutable state that is exposed to the outside. It's not a big flaw, but it breaks basic development rules. Minus one. Next, we have the method prepare text that creates a memory leak. Not only did ChatGPT point it out, but it also understood that this context is activity. Well done, ChatGPT, well done. Plus one. Going forward to the load state method. A first flaw is a usage of the global scope. View model has own life cycle, so it could lead to memory leak. ChatGPT had spotted it, so nicely done, plus one point. However, it didn't propose to move execution to any thread but main. It said about it in the main activity, but here is the spot where we actually should have done it. It's a minus point for a reviewer. Next, two generic exception cut. We catch the root exception instead of the specific. Detect alerts about it, but ChatGPT doesn't. Minus one point. Next, ChatGPT pointed out that error doesn't have any information. Sometimes it should have it, sometimes it doesn't, but it's nice that it was commented. Plus point. The neighbor class is a data class, but it's not market as it. Not a big flaw, but still it's better to use data class. Minus one point. Last but not least, ChatGPT made two comments about our companion object and a late init field. It pointed out a memory leak. It said that the label provider could potentially produce a crash. And this two mistake actually pretty bad. Nice move ChatGPT. Plus two points are going to your score. That's it for the main view model. Basically, that's where all comments from ChatGPT, it didn't spot any mistake in the rest of the files, despite the fact that they have some mistakes. For example, the user profile model should be a data class instead of regular one. Same for user profile wrapper. Minus two point for this to the score. Last but not least, we have the user profile repository that has retrofit and API service. In normal project, they are injected from the dependency injection because there could be some auth or deserialization logic. I would say the final minus one point for a reviewer. The UI file is ok, so we will not count it. So the final score is eight points for the strong comments versus 11 points to the weak review. It spotted half of the critical flaws, so it still could be useful. Or not. The ChatGPT API is not free. At the end of this video, I will share numbers about its price and give some overall thoughts about this type of review. But now, let's review the technical details of the GitHub action and understand how it works under the hood. It could be helpful to you if you want to implement something similar. We will start with a YAML file because it's an entry point for GitHub Actions. We can open a file aiprreviewerworkflow.yaml in a .github slash workflows folder. The very first line is the name of the action. The next line say when it will be triggered, in our case for pull requests. Then we have a single job that will be run on the latest Ubuntu operational system. And this job has five steps. The first step is to check out the code. Additionally, we need to set fetch depth to zero because it will help us to use a git diff command properly. The second is to set up a Python environment. The third is to install dependencies. We have the file in the AI folder 
We can open it and see that it only requires requests and open AI library. The fourth step is the most important. At first, we will set up the environment variables. We need to know the base and the target branch for a particular pull request. Then we grab tokens and useful information from GitHub secrets. We need to set up them upfront. In GitHub, we can go to the settings, then open a secrets and variables menu and click an action item. We need to create a GitHub token to be able to use GitHub API. Also, we need to create a ChatGPT token that can allow us use API of ChatGPT. And we should set which model to use. In my case, I use ChatGPT4. In the variables tab, we need to set extensions for files to avoid spending money on non-development related files like images, text or JSON. Last but not least, we set the repository and pull request information. Only after it, we can run a script that will do magic. The last part is to upload artifacts to GitHub. There will be a log file that contains some debug information. Ok, this file is done, let's move on to a magic script. The first lines check if all environment variables are set. Then we create a chat GPT and GitHub objects. Next, we are requesting the name of the repository remote name. If we go into the method, we will find out that it runs a git remote command. If you run it in the console, you will see something like this. And our target is the origin word. Going next, we run a git diff command for files only. We will use the origin and base and head branch names. For example, in my case, it will be a command git diff names only, origin feature android dummy app, origin feature android bad PR without comments. And you can see that it prints a list of changed files. Next, we will iterate through these results and filter them by a file extension. Next, we will read the file content. And finally, we will run a git diff command for each file. The git diff output has a specific format and we will send it to the ChatGPT without adjustments. In the top part, you can see a git diff command and in the lower part, its output. We have the file content and the change log, so it's time to ask ChatGPT. We have a separate class for this logic. We also have a class with the question. And the question literally sounds like Could you describe briefly errors, issues, potential crashes or unhandled exceptions for the following code with given git diffs? Please also do not add intro word. Just print errors in the format line number cause effect. If there are no errors, issues, potential crashes or unhandled exceptions, just say no critical issues found and git diffs and full code of the file. Then we will receive an answer and classify it. If it has a comment, we'll parse it to the line comment format. And after that, we will use GitHub API and try to post it for a line number. If we haven't succeeded with posting, we will retry the attempt and send it to the pull request in general. The class GitHub has tools for working with an API. It can post to a line in the file or to the pull request. That's it. In a nutshell, we have done. We received a list of changed files from a git diff. For each file, we went in a loop. We grabbed a file content. We read a change list of the file. We sent this data to ChatGPT with a human readable question. We received and parsed an answer. We posted this answer to GitHub. It's a pretty straightforward script. It's time to speak about upsides and downsides. I've used the GPT-4 model and spent approximately $5 testing this feature. A single pull request review cost me approximately 10 cents. It's not too much, but it could be a huge sum if you have a team of productive people. My requests weren't huge. They were approximately up to 200 lines of code. But there could be more code. 
Definitely I don't want to run it on each commit. And I limit the files to avoid reviewing JSON or XML or similar files. When I try to use cheaper models like GPT 3.5 and GPT 4 Turbo, the results were subjectively worse. In other words, the AI didn't spot any flaws using previous models for the same commits. Additionally, GPT-4 gives different comments for the same pull requests. Sometimes I had seven comments and sometimes only three. API usage could also be reduced by removing GitD from the request. I'm sending the full content of the changed file anyway. I added diffs to a love chat GPT to estimate a line number, but I don't know if it works this way. Could it be helpful? Definitely in some cases it can point out critical bugs. The main pros are that it forces you to fix a bug when it's fresh. It will give some false positive comments and require a developer to think if they are worth fixing. Overall, if you have a will and resources, you can try it on your project. You never know for sure until you try. If you enjoyed the topic, please like and subscribe to support the channel. Thanks for watching.